The trebuchet first appeared in Warhammer Fantasy in the Bretonian Army book in 6th edition. Regular viewers will be aware that I've been slowly putting together a Bretonian force ready for the launch of the Old World. Some of the eBay prices for the new inbox trebuchet at the moment are pretty crazy, but I was lucky enough to pick up a fine cast version, some people say that's not lucky, but in decent enough condition and unpainted a few months back. We now know that the Old World is launching early next year, and looking at some rumours and guesses at the moment, we're looking at a potential February release, which I'm very, very excited about. Along with all the other Bretonian news from the Warhammer Day preview, we were made aware that the trebuchet was also returning, but this time in Forge World Resin, which I think is absolutely fantastic news. Anyway, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart, and in this video, I'm going to be taking you through how I get my fine cast trebuchet ready for the tabletop. One of the first things I had to do was fix a bit of a messy end here. There's supposed to be a little shield emblem. It's all messed up in the cast. So I thought the easiest way to do it was to find it down and actually stick a replacement shield on. This is actually from one of the uh, dead models from, from Lord of the Rings. But I thought it looked pretty cool. And my lore means that my Bretonians haven't got the most money. They're away in the border princes. So I thought a more basic plain shield would look good. So after I stuck that on there and uh, primed it black and touched up the Xenothal highlight on there so we were ready for painting. Now the miniature was ready with the heavy Xenothal highlight, very little black showing through. And this was perfect for the contrast style glaze base coating that I like to do. So for the wood I'm using a mix of paints, we've got a contrast Saigor Brown, we have contrast Garagax Sewer, again contrast Skeleton Horde, and then for the final tone we have contrast Midataron Green. A few of you may have seen my Mordheim terrain building video, and a lot of the wood on there I use this method for. So I've heavily thinned each of these contrast paints, probably 15% with water and I'm applying them in patches and blending them together wet on the wood. And you get this really, really nice wood effect. This works best when you have heavily grained detail on your miniature, so you're really letting the contrast run into those recesses, providing that natural highlight there. But what it produces is a nice kind of worn, old weathered wood effect and I think it worked very very well in my Mordheim terrain. It fits the theme of my army because my Mordheim law and my Mordheim town that I'm building is, is based around the old world times. So do go and check that video out if you haven't seen it already but I really like this this wooden method and I decided to use it for the wood on the trebuchet. Now this is a pretty easy technique once you've got the hang of blending it together but I do find it very very easy. I think anyone could pick this up relatively quickly. The most important thing I found was to make sure that the different tones in the wood were clearly visible in certain places. So you're almost blending and get a bit of a transition through and you de definitely get the most effect from, from taking a bit of time to do this. Once that was all fully dry, I turned to model colour deck tan and did a bit of an overall dry brush. Now there is very, very little paint on my brush here. I'm, I'm tickling it, I'm, I'm doing circular motions up and down, really trying to pick up just the edges, just the bits of, of wood grain that's in the higher most areas. I don't want to obliterate or over dry brush or get flat colour on those areas of that nice wood effect. But this just helps to tie it in a little bit more, takes away a little bit of the, the shine from the paint as it dries, takes away a little bit of that satinness from it um, and just gives an overall effect that brings it all tied in together. Next up, I moved on to Express Colour Black Lotus. This is their black paint. It's got quite a heavy blue tone to it. Um, quite stylized in a fantasy kind of way if you use it for stone and that's exactly what I'm doing here. So we've got some different stone areas. We've got the weight that's at the, the, the front of the trebuchet which, which obviously provides that um, force and momentum to, to fling the uh, projectile. Um, I'm also going to use it on the, the stone that it's throwing and there is also a separate pillar which is a sort of a broken bit of architecture which is obviously being lined up as, as the next projectile after this one. Now moving on to contrast wildwood and I'm going to be using it on the rope on the trebuchet. There are a lot of browns in this tutorial for the crew as well as the trebuchet itself. It's 
realistic, it's the colours you need, but it's also important to make sure that you're, you're choosing the right colour. Now, it doesn't matter whether you use brown for this, or Saigor brown, or, or wildwood. What matters more is that you choose colours that aren't completely the same in adjacent areas on the miniature, and then you stick to that. So if you've got a, a cold, um, darker, brown in one area you might want to choose a, a more reddish warmish brown in, a, in an area that's right next to it just so they stand out a little bit now we're going to be using some hardened leather this is a speed paint from army painter and then to sort of provide an immediate example about the different kinds of brown this is a much lighter warmer brown and i'm using this on the the pouch that flings the projectile it'll have a proper name i probably should have googled it beforehand but i'll leave it to someone in the comments to uh, to let me know the name of this now moving on to decayed metal from scale color i want this metal to look worn um, loved but um, also repaired and, and not the newest so I find by giving it a, a sort of a brownish metallic undertone before I put these silver tones on top it really aids with that now I'm starting working my way around the miniature here tucked inside here are some sort of what would be almost metallic idols um, so I have to start with those now if you're watching this in, in early 2024 and you've ordered your trebuchet kit from Forge World I would imagine that you'll find it easier to paint unassembled this came assembled I didn't want to risk breaking it by trying to pull it apart so that's why I'm painting it in this way you may be like me that sometimes just say you know what just paint it assembled it's an army piece it's not a display piece and we'll work around the difficult parts but getting into those idols and some of the metal plates on the inner parts of wood were a little tricky at times so you may want to consider painting it in sub assemblies now we turn to scale color black metal for the next layer on top and we're doing a, a heavy coat over the top of this just leaving a little bit of that decayed metal showing through just to help with that aged look again work my way around the miniature covering all of the areas we've already covered and for the highlight for those areas i'm using game air silver regular viewers will know that these are my three go-to metallic paints that i most often use not always but most often use and i'm just adding some slight over brushes in, in certain areas picking out certain highlights this will all be dulled down with an oil wash so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit off at places and i will come back and do future highlights at the end but i just want to build some of that lighter tone in there from the start so that it blends better with the oil wash over the top now turning to model colour again, we've got orange, brown and light brown, both on the palette at the same time. I'm going to be using them to highlight this, this pouch that flings the projectile. Obviously the darker colour and then the lighter one on top. And the darker colour reinforces that natural highlight which you have from the contrast to style paint. Um, the quick paint over the top of this end of the highlight. And then the top one just gives you a bit of an edge highlight really to make it pop. Now turning to the little shield emblems, we've got some Omega Blue here and I'm following the pattern that I used for the earlier painting tutorial so that the colours that suit my Bretonian army which is blue and yellow. So I'm painting the right hand side of the shield as we look at it blue to match the rest of my army. Then turning to contrast Nasdrag Yellow which I did in my previous tutorials and used on my army as well to do the other half yellow. Now, excuse the pronunciation here, some Dunkel Rao Dark Blue. This is from AK. It's quite a thin paint, but I'm just doing a subtle highlight over the stone areas. It seems to be a really, really nice highlight for that Black Lotus um, Express color paint. And then with the same paints with a 50 mix of white grey here, you can just use a standard white as well if you wanted to, but I find the white grey is really smooth. Just doing another highlight over the top, really, really picking out those um, top highlights. Finishing off with the very slightest touch of white grey just by itself. Now turning to model colour, flat earth and beige brown, I'm just going to be using this to highlight the rope areas and I'm doing a little bit of an overbrush to the side here, it's quite strong detail and just found that this was the quickest way of catching it. Now to citadel colour, so we have Avalanche Sunset and Phalanx Yellow and again previous viewers of my Bretonian tutorials will recognise these colours from those and these are the yellows that I use to highlight the yellow on those shields. So we start with the Avalanche Sunset and then we finish with a little bit of Phalanx Yellow. 
Now for a Rain Rod Blue, Unjurial did in turquoise, butchering pronunciations as we go, but these were the two colours that I chose to highlight the blues, um, mostly to give myself pain every time I have to say them while recording a video. Why I didn't stick to model colour here, I don't know. But following the same technique as I did with the yellow, the first layer of blue, topping off with a final layer and a little bit of an edge highlight of the top colour. Now it's oil wash time and this is soil works from scale color so it's scale 75 and this is grease which is my go-to color um, and i use it a bit like an agrax earth shade on metallic areas mostly and i'm putting this over the metallic areas here which we've already done three different layers on and this just kind of ties them all together i'm also allowing it to, to run onto the wood a little bit it doesn't matter it um, adds a little bit of extra shading and goes into the grain you saw that on the shield and it just works very very well I'm just dulling it down and bringing it all together and making it look weathered whereas a, um, a normal wash something like an Agrax Urshay can pull a little bit um, and can go a little bit wrong but when this stuff dries it just dries like magic and you haven't really done anything that's any more skillful than whacking a standard GW wash on then the other use for this um, oil wash is to, to, to use it as a bit of a pin wash here. You can see me just dabbing it in and it's running into the crevices. And this is just perfect on this area of stone here. Not only does it provide it with a little bit more shadow and definition, once it dries because it's an oil paint, it has a very dry look to it. So it actually provides some natural kind of looking weathering, which is exactly what you want for an old piece of stone like this. It's time to leave the trebuchet alone and we move on to the skin and I'm starting with Express Colour Dwarf Skin. This is my go-to technique at the moment. Um, I'm sure new ones will come along every couple of years or so. I tend to find a recipe I like and, and use it fairly heavily. And this is my go-to for Caucasian skin. Um, copied from Juan Higlo miniatures when he was first showing off the Express Color range and I just absolutely found it fantastic. So you need it to work over a fairly white surface, a fairly light um, base color in order for it to work properly. So you're talking about a white prime, a gray, a very light gray prime, or this Zenithal that I do. The paint is thin enough that it runs beautifully in all of the recesses. So if you've got a miniature with lots of detail, it works even better on providing with that natural shadow in there. But it leaves a lovely natural highlight on the raised areas as well. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. The key to it is these next stages. We've got gloomy violet and deep purple. Again, these were part of that uh, color scheme that I'm not taking credit for inventing. I just copied it off a much better painter, but it's absolutely fantastic. So the gloomy violet I use as a bit of a shadow to add some of those colder tones that you get to a to skin. If you look at skin, it's very transparent, so it'll pick up what's underneath. That's why you see veins and things. So providing a couple of colours like this really help make skin look realistic. You can also add greens and things. But so the gloomy violet goes around the edges of clothing where there might be some extra shadow where it's a little bit darker. And then I turn to the, the lighter colour and paint that around the noses and eyes and cheeks. And that provides a bit of warmth to balance off against the base colour and that sort of dull shadow of the gloomy violet as well and I just love the effect that it has and you can almost leave the skin as it is there you have very, very very little in the way of highlights afterwards now we turn back to the livery colors essentially of my Britannian army so back to that yellow and blue again that we used on the trebuchet itself I don't want to put too much of it on these peasants the idea is that they have the odd little bit of livery coat shown but very much like uh, medieval Britain a lot of the time people were just wearing their own things they may have been given a livery coat for a particular battle or something like that may have been issued to them but they're not necessarily going to be in full colors of their lords so a couple of the men I've decided to go with the yellow I put a blue on a couple of the others and the last one I leave just in his own shirt sleeves now we move on to Contrast Garagak Sewer and we're, we're starting what is a sea of browns here. Um, it can get quite complicated to follow and because I'm painting so many miniatures in one go here, it's not going to be quite the paint by numbers tutorial that you may have in some others, but I hopefully will leave you enough detail that you can follow along if you, if you wanted to. I'm hoping more that you'll take inspiration and, and, and use the odd recipe for the odd colour. But the Garagak Sewer is one of the browns here and I'll be using lots of browns to base coat and then using a couple of recipes to highlight afterwards. 
So I work my way along the miniatures, picking them up as I go, deciding which parts are going to have the, the brand that I have to have open at that time. And at this point, obviously still working on the Garagout sewer. And a little interlude from browns, we move over to some white. So this is Templar white and medium from Express Color. It seems to be my favorite white at the moment, but it's very similar to the GW version as well. It's a 50-50 mix here. Now this only really works if you've got a white base or nearly white base like this heavy zenithal here to work from, because essentially what you've got here is a gray glaze which shades into the recesses of the white areas, meaning you've got something that looks like a shaded white. Decided to add white to a couple of the miniatures. So this miniature here will have a, a, a white shirt. Obviously it'll be a little bit dirty, but it just sort of breaks up the colors a little bit and, and, and stands out and really pops on the table as well. While I was at it, I decided this old chap here was going to be so old or so stressed that he's got very, very white hair. What's left of it? He's, he's like a little bit like me on the top. Now using Skeleton Horde and some medium in the same 50-50 mix and just doing the same thing as I did with the white really. I wanted to add an off-white clothing option to some of the men and, and this was the, the nicest way of doing it. You already get that natural highlight popping through there which is very easy to highlight afterwards and just gives a really really pleasing effect. Covering a few of the shirts, some of the wraps they have around their, their shins. And now moving back to that hardened leather from Speed Paint. And again, we're back to the browns, picking out certain areas on certain miniatures. I didn't really have an overall plan, just doing it by eye, but working my way around. Now onto some contrast wild wood, and I'm sticking to the wood areas for this here. So we're talking about the, the halves of the, the axes and picks and things like that. Then I also thinned it down with water, probably two parts water to one part wildwood. And this one chap here has obviously got something akin to leprosy or definitely some very, very nasty skin condition and boils. And I'm using it for his bandages. I didn't want these to look like clean bandages. I want them to look like bandages that he kind of lives in all the time. So they'll be a horrible, dirty colour. Now for some contrast, a black legion, and I'm just using that here to paint in what these guys have strapped to their belts. So they all seem to have something that used to live strapped to their belt, maybe for a tasty snack later on. So we've got some rabbits. I think there's a couple of things that look or even look like rats or something like that. Um, and God knows what they're going to do with them later. Hopefully they cook them well enough to remove any instances of future tummy troubles. Back to the browns again, and we have some contrast to Saigor brown now. And I tended to use this for a lot of the, the, the leather areas, so for the belts and some of the strapping and things like that. Just like I did with the white, I decided this was the perfect color for the hair for a couple of the chaps as well. Now cracking out the Agarash Dunes, which is a slightly richer yellowy brown version of Skeleton Horde, and this was perfect for the dog. I'm not quite sure what breed of dog this is. I've got a Spaniel, and it's certainly reminiscent of that a little bit, um, but it's a bit of a strange looking dog. When I first saw the miniature, I did think it was a sheep. I thought that he had brought his um, evening entertainment with him to the battle, but no, it's definitely a dog. I'm not quite sure what its role is. It has some kind of parchment strapped to the side as well. I don't know what it was for, but we'll, we'll cover how I paint that a little bit later in the video. Now it's time to choose the hair colour for the last two guys, and we went for Black Templar and Nyandan Yellow. So the young cheeky chappy here with the, uh, with the um, slingshot has a nice bright blonde hair. Um, maybe his... Uh, his mother was visited by a noble lord one evening. Um, the little cheeky scamp has got nice yellow hair anyway. And then for the older chap with the slightly monk-like hairstyle and beard, we've gone for a black colour. Now to some black metal from Scale Colour, and we're covering all of the metallic areas on these guys. I work my way around all of the miniatures, making sure that I'm covering any of those uh, metallic areas. Now back to those favourite blue and yellow or highlight combinations again. It's time to start highlighting the miniatures and I'm starting with those little livery coloured areas. Also using the phalanx yellow while I had the pot open to highlight the young scamp's hair. Highlighting the blue in exactly the same way as I did on the shields, just reinforcing those higher areas and then just giving a top highlight to help it pop. 
Now for a whole lot of model colour browns. Now pause the video if you want to see all of those there. As I said, this is more of a method video than giving you a full stage by stage. But we've got a set of three browns in order to highlight some of the sort of the colder areas and the same orange browns that we used earlier on to highlight some of the lighter areas. And that's what we're starting with here. And here we are highlighting those slightly less reddish browns here, these duller browns, so this nice leather on the cape. And something like Flat Earth, which is what I'm using here, is the perfect first highlight over these kind of paints. Now on to highlight the off-white and white areas. We've got white, grey and dark sand as the mid-tones, and then we've got the off-white as the final highlight. Here we're starting with the white, grey, um, which really kind of gives you enough of a highlight anyway over the the Zenithor and then we had the, the the white contrast style paint which is a Templar white in this instance and this just really really helps make the top highlights pop and if you want to afterwards you can have an even thinner highlight of off-white on top again to really make it stand out for the cream areas, for that more of that yellowy white effect, we're using the dark sand first and again just reinforcing those very, very much top areas where the contrast paint, which in this case was Skeleton Horde, didn't pull. It just really tends to tidy it up and really gives it a nice 3D effect. And again, in that final mix, you can add a little bit of the off-white to really, really make it stand out. Just like I did with the young scamps there, I had the paint out on the palette, so I used the opportunity to highlight these old chaps hair and moustache, while also taking the opportunity to highlight all of those wraps that are around the lower legs of most of the miniatures. Cracking out model colour London grey, and this was enough just to touch up and reinforce the highlight on this chap's mallet, as well as highlight his beard and hair. Sticking with model colour, we have German camo beige and deck tan. I'm just using that here to highlight this bit of parchment that's strapped to the side of the dog. I've no idea why. Maybe it's the instructions of how to use the dog. The instructions for the trebuchet, I doubt these guys can read, so I'm really not quite sure what it's for, but it's a bit of fun anyway. So sticking with model colour, we've got some green ochre here. I'm going to be using that to start highlighting the dog and also mix in a little bit of off-white to provide that top highlight as well. Now moving on to the eyes, I'm just um, dotting in some off-white into the eye sockets here. Most of the sockets have a really nice dark um, base layer anyway from the contrast style paint running in there. If they don't, I tend to put a bit brown in first, but these are pretty simple little downward lines of black for the pupil and um, white lines and I do this before I highlight the skin so I can touch up afterwards and then for that flesh highlight itself I'm using natural flesh from the Octura range from Vallejo and basic skin tone from and standard Vallejo model colour as well I'm starting with the the darker colour heavily thinned and just adding in a little bit of the basic flesh for the top highlight I don't want to paint over that nice skin effect that we've got from the Express Colour paints that we talked about towards the beginning of the video and really just trying to reinforce it where it's a little bit done in places. So being very, very minimal here with my highlights, trying to make sure that they blend in with the, the, the natural highlight that that technique has already added. So I'm seeing here, I'm really not doing anything too dramatic, just making it pop a little bit more. So turning to some Game Air Silver, again the same metallics we used on the trebuchet, I'm just adding some highlights in already onto the metallic areas. Working my way around the whole crew, trying not to be too rough with it, I want to keep the, the darker tone as the, the dominant colour. And just like I did on the trebuchet, turning to the Soil Works Oil Wash Grease, I'm just using it like you would do with Agrax Earthshade. I'm trying to leave it away from the, the, the sort of the brighter areas. You can wipe it off, this is the, the joy of oil paint, it comes off. Whereas a Agrax Earthshade, once it dries, that's it, it pretty much stuck on there. Oil paints you can remove with a little bit of white spirit or even just by rubbing it. But you've just got a little bit more control here. It's easy to keep away from the edges. It runs into the recesses more and just gives this metal work a nice kind of old weathered tool look. Now to add a little bit of writing to that parchment, I started with a kind of a red coloured like hieroglyph effect there and then just lots of little squiggly nonsense to represent text on the parchment. Like I said, no idea what it's supposed to mean, I'll, uh, I'll think of something. Turning to a little blood for the blood god here, I still think I prefer the old 
version of this rather than this new one but I thin it on the palette a little bit and I'm just sort of blending it into the bandages to show where some nastiness is seeping through and also using it around at the edge of the boils and things on the cheek and then painting it right into his left eye which isn't the best cast so you can kind of cover some of that up. There seems to be like a mould line right down the centre of it which is impossible to remove without completely obliterating half the face um, and this just does a good job of kind of covering that up. I mean this, this guy's pretty gross, you wouldn't want to be sitting across the table from him when you're eating your lunch. Now that the oil washes have dried on the trebuchet, I'm returning to the Game Air Silver and just doing a little bit of light overbrushing and dry brushing to catch the top areas of some of the metallics just to make them pop again. It doesn't need too much. The pre-highlighting worked pretty well for the effect that I was trying to achieve with this, but I still found it worthwhile to pick out a few areas. Then followed the same method up on all of the tools on the crew. We're getting close now, so we have some diorama effects, dark earth from the Leo as the base text, just a thin layer. Once that was dry, a thin coat of Agrax Earthshade just to shade it. And then when that's completely dry, it's time to brush in some dry pigment, which is my go-to effect on bases. This is Light Sienna from Vallejo. Adding a range of tufts here, I've got a few longer ones, but most of them here are 2 mil. Finishing off the effects with some more Vallejo Diorama effects, and this is European mud, and this is a mud effect rather than a basing texture. And then for me, it's always, or very, very nearly always, a black rim for my bases. And that's it, we are done, the whole trebuchet and crew. I'm pretty pleased with the way these came out. These are, again, just a reminder, this is a tabletop, but a nice tabletop finish for an army. We're not looking at display level here, but we're using very, very standard painting techniques over a less standard base technique of the contrast style glazes over that zenith or highlight. I just prefer it to base coating and provided it gives me um, a nice base layer to work from which really speeds the later processes up and provides a, a nicer contrast between light and dark on my miniatures which I really really like. You'll see here that I have based my trebuchet. This is on a 100 by 60. I don't know if this is gonna be the right size. I saw the base that it was on in the image from the reveal on Warhammer Day. I had this base and I measured it up and it just looked about right. I might be wrong. If it is, it's only super glued on. I'll probably pop it off and rebase it to the, whatever the official size ends up being. I really, really love these miniatures. There's lots and lots of character here. They're definitely a different style to the, the newer miniatures and the newer designed miniatures are, are, are definitely moved on in some way or another. But I'm very happy with these to be in my current Britannia army. And I hope you've enjoyed the video and, and found it useful in one way or another. Maybe you're watching this video after the game has been released and you've bought your miniatures and you're searching online for some tutorials and things. So if, it, if you are and you're enjoying your new old world miniatures there in the future, then hope you're having fun painting your army I've definitely been having fun working on all these videos building up towards the release of the old world and I'm excited that uh, we finally have not not a definitive date but we, we know it's going to be early next year and it looks like some kind of January or, or February release and I am very very excited about it I will definitely be doing more tutorials towards the old world. Though they're going to keep coming. More stuff for the Petonians, I'm sure. Definitely more stuff for the Tomb Kings. And I'll also continue covering the other races that I have done with individual one-off paint jobs. So if you're not already subscribed and you want to see some more, please do subscribe now and give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. It really does genuinely really does help other people see the video having a like on there and, and drop us a comment let me know what you think not only does that help me as well i really do love chatting to you all in the comments about painting about the old world and things like that but it's time to let you go thank you very much for watching take care and i'll catch you soon